wanted to tell you about our new exciting brush display. It may not seem exciting, but we're really happy to have it because it's made a huge difference for us for our retail shops. Yes, if you're thinking about selling brushes in your store or boutique, um, you might really want to consider bringing in the display. It um, really helps to showcase and sell the product a lot more than you would uh, anticipate. And so and it, the biggest thing for us, it actually shows you each style. It shows you the pricing, so it makes it easy for people to feel comfortable asking about the brush. It also keeps it from getting used, of course, which means it won't get um, quite so messed up and, and you'll know where they're at at all times and things like that. So we actually want to go through the brushes and sort of explain these. There's some other YouTube videos of ours um, talking more specifically about use and showing them in action, but we do want to go through and show you about these guys. Yeah, and if you've, if you've seen or heard our other videos and, you know, don't need to hear about this, fast forward or <laughs> like us anyway. But uh, the first, our, our number one brush is my number one favorite brush, and this is a dupe for Max 217. I love this brush. Um, the nice thing, too, about our brushes is that the bristles are um, vegan or synthetic, so they're a circular cut synthetic fiber that mimics virgin hair, so it's very soft, but it has the density when and where it's needed. So. Some of these work really well with emollient or creamy products as well as with powder products. So the number one is just a very versatile brush that works with concealer, it works with blending eyeshadows. I actually like to use it if I'm working with powder foundation and using it for concealer there too. So that's my go-to brush. It's kind of a great everything brush. This is one of those things, as a pro makeup artist, I have multiples of these in my kit. Oh yeah, me too. For sure. Yeah. Um, and also, just so you know, the handles are recycled reclaimed wood. We're very Asheville. We wanted to make sure we were as green as possible with these guys. Another benefit of the synthetic fiber is that they're also not going to hold bacteria the way the natural fiber does. They don't get rough and they don't shed. Um, that's a big thing for me. You never want to do a full face of makeup and then spend another five minutes pulling fibers off someone that's not cute. Yeah, and as a professional makeup artist, they tend to dry faster. So if you're having to sanitize or um, clean between uses or between models, they dry much faster than a natural fiber does too. We actually find even on set when we are not able to use our real, really hardcore sterilizing cleanser, we can actually use 91 volume alcohol and do quick changes that way. They are tough. They really yeah. hold up to abuse, which is important for brushes. And of course, anytime you are doing brush cleaning, we recommend drying them laying sideways. So that's a big trick from us. Um, so our number two brush actually is our great little concealer brush. It's a little paddle. I know that Scott likes to use it as a foundation brush as well for detail work. Yeah. Uh, we actually have a great uh, a blogger, uh, a blogger, excuse me, Samantha Riley, who uses it to really pack on eyeshadow. So it, we love that the fact that they're tools and can be used differently depending on the artist or the need. The next brush actually is our traditional paddle foundation brush. It's what I use every day to put my liquid foundation on. I love it. I know it's a nice basic brush, but it's because it really works, that that style is something you see over and over again. It does have the nice variation in the fiber, so it really holds the product, and then it helps to really buff it out and do some nice edging on it. And then our next one? Is our angled detail blush brush. Uh, this works great with blush and also with um, bronzer or contour. So this tends to be one of our most popular brushes. Yeah, Saunders Kennedy, another one of our great YouTube guys, actually uses this to do all his bronzing work with. And we love that there are some YouTubers out there that have really picked our brushes as their holy grail uh, brushes and their favorites. And so this is one of those ones that a lot of folks have picked up and we're really honored to be their favorite. Our number five brush is a basic eyeshadow brush. The nice thing about it, though, is it does have enough fluff in there to actually be able to blend in, work into the crease if you want. But it's a nice uh, overall basic eyeshadow brush. And these brushes are great because they actually are a little bit slanted, so they push and pick up product really easily. You do not have to dig for product on those guys, which is wonderful because I can't stand to have to dig for products. And then our number six brush. It's actually one of Scott's favorites. Yeah, I love this. It's, you know, it's basically your basic crease brush, but I also like it again when I'm dealing with our powder foundation for concealer because it just, it works like a mini powder brush. So if you want to do a light application of powder all over your face and then go in just where you need it for concealing, this is a great brush for that. So between creasing uh, or just eyeshadow crease brush and concealer, I, I love this brush. 
And then number seven brush is actually another one of Scott's uh, brushes that he designed. And that guy is used, Scott? Yeah, I'm a big fan of detail with eyeshadows. And so you'll notice we have several smaller brushes that are really designed to work both with cream and powders to just really help deposit a concentrated color where you want it and then to go in with something like a crease that's clean to blend that in so you get a really beautiful subtle wash of color that can be built up over time. We laugh about the fact that, you know, taking a big brush, dipping it into a color and sliding it into your crease, by the time you get done with that, the subtlety or the nuance is gone. So. Um, some of these little detail brushes are really nice for things like that. And speaking of detail brushes, number eight, hands down our number one brush, actually this guy, it's yeah. fabulous for everything from doing a really beautiful liner, from our so our cream liners work beautifully with this brush. It also works beautifully with shadow lining, great for detailing, it can work as a little lip detail brush. This is the one I have the most of in my kit, I and I could use more. I love this brush, I don't do my own makeup without it. Um, so yeah, if I only had to have one brush, somehow it would be that one. It would be number eight. So that's one of our little, really tiny little detail brushes that we absolutely love. Yeah, it's so razor thin. You know, what we found is that our, our angle liner brush works really well with our brow gel, but when you're dealing with our cream eyeliner, the number eight actually can get a much tighter, finer line. So we recommend number eight with our cream eyeliner and our number nine more for brows, uh, with our brow gel or with our shadows. Yeah, it works great for shadow lining as well, that number nine, the angle brush that he was talking about. The number 10 brush, actually, um, it's another one of those ones that the YouTubers have really picked up and done a lot of different things with. It's our little mini fan. It was actually designed for us. Um, we did it so we could actually paint mascara onto lashes. I, I use it when I'm doing any mascara work on clients. Works great actually on myself if I'm actually having to paint on with my false lashes I have to wear. So it's really good for that. It's also good for blondes who yeah, really want to paint their lashes. That's what I was going to say. Is I, I like to use it because I'm putting mascara on models or other people. And if I have somebody particularly blonde or really fair, I need to get into that route. And I feel like spoolies don't work quite as well as being able to get in to the top and bottom of the lash and paint that on with the, the fan brush. So we're big fans of that, but it's definitely a, a very pro-centric brush. Yeah, and then like I mentioned, some of the YouTubers are using it, like Samantha Riley loves it, to do highlights with. So she'll actually do it as a cheek highlight mm -hmm. and getting the little details in for that. So again, don't be afraid. These are tools. So however you love them, we'd love to know how you like them. Let us know if you're using them for something different because it's always interesting to see other artists and how they're using things. Yeah, it's funny. We decided, we chose really to specifically and intentionally number them instead of name them because we find as artists we use them in different ways and I'm all about multiple uses or the practicality of a brush that can do multiple things. So we've just pretty much numbered them for the most part. Having said that, our number 11 is, our, is our, actually our lip brush. Now the lip brush was something we all had to agree on. There were three of us all arguing about lip brush size, which is why I say some of these other guys can be used as lip brushes as well. So you know when you're doing a red lip on someone, that detail work is extremely fine. Having said that, for me, I like a little bit of a larger lip brush as a rule, especially if you're doing a nude lip, something like that, where you don't need that precision to be quite so much. This guy is fabulous for really getting the color on and mixes well. And I really love that as a lip brush, both on myself and on using it for other folks. Yeah, and it's funny because I do, I use this for shadow a lot because the difference is the shorter and denser, the more color it's going to pack on. So the fact that this has a little bit more length, once you apply that, you can actually blend it a little bit more and have a little more control than going in with a larger crease brush. So that, again, that's like, you know, different people, different uses, but it's a, it's a really great brush. Now, here is a brush that we're very proud of. This is actually our number 12. This is our powder foundation brush. This guy is designed to really push and pick up that powder foundation you've heard us talk about numerous times. It is a little bit shorter handle rather than the long pro handles because we find a lot of our folks are traveling with this brush. Another one of those ones, if you're a pro artist, you may have multiples in your kit. It makes it easier. Um, and this guy, just so soft. They all feel like vegan bunnies. We promise no bunnies used. And in that same note, actually going straight into our number 13, this is actually the travel version. This is a kabuki brush, and it actually does have, and we'll have a little example here, it does travel like this. But it's nice to see you actually have it displayed so people can actually see it here for, for use. And then right into our number 14, which is actually, the Scott designed this guy. This is actually with our same fabulous fibers. 
but it's really a set brush for lips, and here's why. It's funny, you know, it's like it's very much an old school brush, but for me, if I'm on set, a lot of times I'm on location and I'm running around, I can load the brush, retract it, put it in my apron, and carry it around so that I can touch up when and, when and wherever I need to. So it's great for a woman on the go, but it's also really good to have several of these as a professional makeup artist because I can designate each model having their own sort of lip and then as we move around they're there they're there they're loaded they're ready to go if I need a quick and immediate touch up so and they don't have lids so you're not fumbling on yeah. set looking for a lid it actually just retracts in and out so it's really nice again as a pro artist you don't have to be worried about having multiple hands to do something like that yeah. so. and one of the other advantages uh, for our number 12 especially being uh, using it with our pressed powder foundation is a lot of powder brushes can be bigger and rounder and really those are designed to brush off powder. So this is designed more to actually pick up, hold, and press powder onto the skin and then blend it in. So you, functionally it's working a little bit more specific for pressed and applying powder as opposed to brushing it off once you've kind of had your makeup set. And I know actually Scott and Zach actually both use, they put the liquid foundations on either with one of these brushes or with a fingertip, and then they actually use one of these two brushes yeah. to buff off to have a more sheer finish with our liquid foundation. So that's another use for those brushes. So the dimensions on this, in case someone's interested for retail purposes, Scott? Yeah, the, the width, it's nine inches wide by 12 inches deep, and uh, like all of the rest of ours, 18 inches high. So they everything lines up uh, evenly at, at a perfect 18 inches. And we're finding in our own flagship store here in Asheville, North Carolina, a lot of clients are now coming in and they're, being, they're able to come up and walk up and just pick brushes as they want. So it actually is really helping our clients find what they're looking for without having to dig through a glass of brushes or anything like that. It makes it nice and simple to see everything that's available. So if you're curious or if we didn't give enough information about pricing on everything, you can find the prices on the brushes. And if you are a retailer, you can find the price of the display unit on our wholesale site at serenityscottbeauty.com. And thank you so much for watching us, and we look forward to seeing you in some more videos talking about our new display unit. And as always, uh, please like us here on YouTube. We're also on Instagram, on Facebook, and of course on Twitter, and even on Pinterest. You guys have All a great her. day. <laughs> no, it really isn't. <laughs> thank you guys. Bye, -bye. Bye everybody. Bye.